This is Shara Kanzler, editor of Fast Casual, and you are listening to Navigating COVID-19. Welcome back, everyone, to Navigating COVID-19, a podcast about how restaurants are responding to and recovering from the coronavirus pandemic. Today, I'm joined with Shara Kanzler. She is the editor of Fast Casual, and I'll be talking with her about how restaurants are responding to this pandemic. I'll be also looking at some of the news items this week, such as how Sobel, a 40-unit a cable and smoothie chain, is handling COVID-19, how Takeout Tuesday has returned, and how the CARES Act can help restaurant brands. But before we get into all of that, enjoy a quick message from our sponsor. Now more than ever, restaurants demand secure, reliable, and cost-effective IT networks to keep business flowing. While you focus on the health of your patrons and staff during this crisis, NetSurian is here to support you with a managed network service purpose-built for restaurants. Learn more at netsurian.com forward slash restaurants. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have a variety of interesting topics. I'll be talking with Shara Kanzler, who is the editor of Fast Casual, about how restaurants are handling these trying times. I'll also be talking about three specific stories. I'll be looking at how Sobol, 40-unit a cable and smoothie chain, is handling COVID-19. I'll also be looking at Takeout Tuesday, and how the CARES Act can help large restaurant brands. With that in mind, um, according to NPT Group, restaurant transactions are down 42% in wake of the COVID dining closures. But restaurants and food service vendors are doing everything possible to reach each other in their communities. They've set up employee funds and are donating thousands of meals to healthcare workers. Here to tell us more about is Shara, who has been covering how restaurants are adapting to these trying times. Hi, Shara. How are you doing today? Hey, Bradley. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. Good to have you. So my first question for you is, it's no secret that the restaurant industry has taken a huge hit from all of this. What are you hearing as an expert in this field? Yeah, so you're definitely right. We're, you know, reporting on a lot of restaurants having to close some locations, maybe cutting hours. Um, laying off workers. A lot are trying not to do that, of course, and um, trying to split up shifts and giving people that want the chance to work a chance to work. There are a couple of bright spots. You know, Wingstop, for example, just announced today that their earnings are up higher, and that's because they had such a strong um, focus on, you know, digital orders, carry out and delivery, and so they've seen a success with that. Um, But for the most part, you know, it's everybody's just trying to stay alive any kind of extra money they can bring in with those delivery or carry out some restaurants are you know selling groceries from their restaurants or even toilet paper things like that just anything they can get to get people in the door or not in the door I guess but you know to get them to deliver to their doors right that's really interesting so obviously for a lot of these restaurants it's going to be it's a major adjustment to go from if they're used to just dine in to carry out so what are you noticing of how they're sort of adjusting to that yeah so they're definitely having to focus more on carry out and delivery obviously with the dine and shuttering um a lot of them luckily had those systems in place so they can just take their workforce that were you know in the restaurants and you know redistribute that workforce into delivering carry out orders but others haven't you know haven't really rolled that out as well yet so they're trying to jump in right now and, and get on the big wagon so we have seen a lot of restaurant food service vendors offering their services uh, we wrote about that earlier this or last week actually Um, you know, they're cutting fees and trying to help restaurants get on those platforms where they can do delivery and carry out a lot easier and and just to try to bring in some revenue. That's really interesting. Can you think of any companies in specific that are donating their services to restaurants? Yeah, like Grubhub has cut their franchising fees, Patronix, Bring, Toast, they all have different varieties of free services. So it's just been really interesting to see how the industries come together to help one another. That is very interesting. What are some other examples of camaraderie you've noticed? Because I've noticed a lot of sort of in the restaurant industry specifically, them sort of coming together and trying to figure out, okay, how can we get through this? 
Exactly. Um, and the restaurant industry has always been good about taking care of each other, and this is no exception. Um, small brands are jumping in, even, you know, smaller, the Habit Burger, Fat Burger, they're both burger chains out of California. They're using their food trucks to deliver thousands of restaurant meals to hospital workers. And then you have, a, you know, the bigger chains, like even Firehouse Subs, is donating another, you know, thousands and thousands of meals to um, firefighters and police officers and hospital workers, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, you know, they just said that they wanted to donate 100,000 smoothies to frontline workers. And then you have even the smaller chains, um, Mighty Quinn's Barbecue has 12 locations and they're giving a thousand, they've given a thousand hospital workers in New York free meals so far. Um, and then you have funds being set up for employees. There's a restaurant group in Utah called Four Foods Group, and they have set up a $1 million fund to just try to be able to pay their workers. So, you know, big or small, people are really coming together in, in this. So it, it's a trying time, but it's also inspiring to see how everyone's working together to, you know, just keep these people in, in business. That's very true. And I've also noticed on our, on our other sites, Food Truck Operator has talked a lot about how food trucks are donating, you know, meal packages to healthcare workers or especially, you know, and a very stressful time right now. But a lot, one of the big news items is about the stimulus package, which just passed Congress recently. Do you think the stimulus package is going to save many of these restaurants? I mean, I think it's going to definitely, you know, it's helping for sure. And it definitely seems to be helping the actual restaurant workers. Um, it remains to be seen, I think, how it will help small restaurant owners because there are, you know, caveats, they can get the their funding forgiven if they keep their payroll the same, but that can be really hard for some of these restaurants. But what I'm hearing from most people that we've been interviewing is that it's just really complicated to figure out which ones to apply for and how it all works. So they're all trying to navigate that right now. Right. It really seems like not everyone's just really trying to get their hands around this, but this has been really insightful. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we get off here? No, I don't think so. It's just, um, you know, we are covering this topic, I would say, in depth on all of our websites, fastcasual.com, qsrweb.com, pizza marketplace, and food truck operator on all our food sites. And we're, you know, doing our best to get the word out. So, um, you know, if anybody is interested in sharing their stories, you know, I urge them they could just hop on, they can hop online and send me an email to editor at fastcasual.com. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Shara. Thanks, Bradley. Now more than ever, restaurants demand secure, reliable, and cost-effective IT networks to keep business flowing. While you focus on the health of your patrons and staff during this crisis, NetSurian is here to support you with a managed network service purpose-built for restaurants. Learn more at netsurian.com forward slash restaurants. And welcome back to the new segment of our podcast. First off, we'll be looking at Sobel. Sobel, a 40-unit a cable and smoothie chain, opened several locations in 2019 and was looking to double in size over the next year. The onset of COVID-19, however, has taken its toll, slashing year-over-year -year March and April sales 60% and leading to the temporary closing of seven locations. Co-founder Jason... Mazzarone, however, isn't throwing in the towel. In fact, he's doing everything he can to help the six-year-old business survive. He and his co-founder have taken pay cuts and trimmed operating hours, for example, and are working closely with franchisees to help keep the doors open. No in-restaurant employees have been laid off yet, Mazzarone said in an interview with Fast Casual. Employees who do not want to work or don't feel comfortable working shifts have been removed from the schedule. Sobol franchisee Angelina Perry said sales were down 40% and 50% at her two units in Long Island. But like Mazzarone, she hasn't laid off workers. The stores, however, are open fewer hours and are running with less than half the staff they normally have. We aren't busy enough and we are looking out for the safety of our staff and the safety of our customers by keeping minimal staff on, she said during an interview with Fast Casual. We are trying to divide the shifts we have available fairly between the employees who want to continue to work. Some employees have opted to stay home and self-quarantine. 
Both Mazzarone and Perry have applied for aid under the CARES Act, but don't know if they'll be approved or how much it will actually help them. The government stimulus package is changing daily, and it's hard to say what exactly would come of it and if it will be enough to keep us open, Perry said. Anything and everything will help, but we won't be banking the stimulus package to keep us open. We hope we'll be able to stay open and serve our customers through takeout, online ordering, DoorDash, and Uber Eats. She's applied for the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, although she's not sure if she'll use either, if approved. But I feel it was smart to apply for both and make the decision when the time comes, she said. Mazzarone has applied for the same loans as Perry and is waiting approval. We are trying to support our team any way we can, he said, whether it's assisting franchisees with customer communication efforts, helping find and partner with local charities, working closely with our PR firm and third-party delivery partners, or simply just being an ear for ideas and concerns. Next, we'll be looking at Takeout Tuesday. The Great American Takeout returns Tuesday for its third week, this time with a chance to win a year free takeout, according to a news release. As an ad incentive this week, Shift 4 Payments is giving $5,000 to be used at restaurants to one diner who shares a photo of their takeout meal on the social media using the hashtag, hashtag the Great American Takeout. Additionally, Shift for Payments and Tyson Food Service will donate to the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund based on social media posts supporting the Great American Takeout. For every social post tag Tuesday with the Great American Takeout, Tyson Food Service will make a $5 donation up to $25,000, and Shift for Payments will make a $1 donation up to $10,000 to the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund, which supports U.S. restaurant workers financially impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. As COVID-19 continues to impact every aspect of our day-to-day lives, restaurants are being hit especially hard. Nate Hirschberg, Vice President of Marketing for Shift for Payments, said in the release. Through our Shift for Cares initiative, we're, we've committed to raising over $200 million for our restaurant customers. By partnering with the Great American Takeout, we hope to help restaurants of all sizes weather this storm. The Great American Takeout is supported by a coalition of more than 400 restaurants nationwide, as well as partners like the Coca-Cola Company, PepsiCo, Ventura Foods, and Prize Logic. The initiative has generated widespread buzz, reaching more than 117 million people nationwide. According to Lieberman Inc. slash FRC Research New York, 35% of the total U.S. population is aware of the Great American Takeout, and the program has raised $175,000 to date for charitable organizations supporting restaurant workers. Next, we'll be looking at the CARES Act and how it can help large restaurant brands. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security, or CARES Act, contains a wealth of provisions to help U.S. companies weather the financial losses caused by COVID-19. The act, signed into law at the end of March, provides new loan programs that vary depending on company size, and in addition to new unemployment and tax benefits. Although provisions designed to benefit companies with less than 500 workers, such as the Paycheck Protection Program, have been top of mind for many brands, the bill also provides relief to companies with 500 to 10,000 employees along with new unemployment and tax benefits. Attorneys for Atkin, Gump, Strauss, Hauer, and Feld LP, based in Washington, D.C., provide an overview of these loans and benefits during a webinar last week sponsored by the National Automatic Merchandising Association. In addition to the SBA loans described in Part 1 of this series, the CARES Act appropriates at least $454 billion to the U.S. Treasury, to support direct lending programs for eligible mid-sized businesses, states, and municipalities, attorney Brendan Dunn said during the webinar. The direct lending loans for mid-sized businesses will be much larger than the SBA loans, and they are not designed to be forgivable, he explained. It is similar to the SBA program, that ultimately it's going to be run through the banks, Dunn said. The liquidity will be available through this direct lending program will dwarf what's available under the SBA lending program. Dunn said there should be an announcement about the direct lending program in the next week or two. The law does not say how the Treasury Secretary must distribute the loans and loan guarantees or the maximum loan amount. The eligible companies cannot have other credit reasonably available. This is certainly a huge priority to get this program up and running, Dunn said. They have focused on SBA first. Dunn characterized the new direct lending program as prescriptive, 
on account of the number of stipulations, such as requiring borrowers to remain neutral in union organizing efforts for the term of the loan, and restrictions on stock buyouts, dividends, capital redistributions, offshoring prohibitions, and executive compensation. Participants must retain 90% of the workforce with full compensation and benefits until September 30th, 2020, and certify they intend to restore no less than 90% of the workforce that existed as of February 1st, 2020, and must restore all compensation and benefits within four months and termination of the emergency declarations related to COVID-19. You're most likely going to be in a position where you're working with your bank and the local Fed and the regional Fed that's charged with implementing the program and or get the lending, he said. The law also includes a pair of new unemployment benefit programs. The first is a temporary 39-week benefit for the remainder of the year for workers who were not previously eligible if they found themselves unemployed due to COVID-19, said attorney Josh Teitelbaum. Teitelbaum. This program, called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, will be available to partially or self-employed independent contractors, such as gig economy workers, freelancers, and people with a limited work history, Teitelbaum said. These workers must have a COVID-19 specific reason for being unemployed, such as having the illness, being required to stay at home because of the pandemic, or being responsible for someone who has the illness. The second program is called Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation, and it's for workers eligible for state-based unemployment. This benefit consists of 13 additional weeks of unemployment compensation, which will be equal to the state weekly unemployment benefit plus an additional $600. Under both programs, beneficiaries can get an additional $600 per week from the federal government, Teitelbaum said. And perhaps most importantly, there is no impact on employer unemployment insurance contribution at the state or federal level. States will develop agreements with the Department of Labor in order to take advantage of the increased unemployment insurance benefits provided by the CARES Act. Businesses are also eligible for additional tax benefits under the CARES Act, as explained by attorney Zach Rudisill. For 2018 through 2020, corporations will be allowed to carry back net operating losses that arose in 2018 through 2020 to the five preceding tax years, including years for which the corporate tax rate was 35%, Rudisill said. The corporate tax rate was 35% pre-2018, not the current 21%. Corporations will also be allowed to use net operating losses occurring those years to offset taxable income. This removes the 8% limitation in place since 2018. In 2019-2020, corporations will be permitted to deduct more borrowing costs, up to to 50% of earnings rather than only up to 30%. In addition, they they will be permitted to use 2019 earnings for calculating the 2020 interest deduction limit. As of March 27, 2020, employers will be able to defer payment of their share of Social Security tax. They otherwise are required to deposit to the U.S. Treasury electronically, monthly or semi-annually through 2020. Employers that qualify and have their business fully or partially suspended by a COVID-19-related government order or experience a significant decline in gross receipts may get a refundable payroll tax credit by as much as $5,000 per employee for wages and health benefits paid from March 13th through December 31st, 2020, Rudisil said. If the aggregate credit amounts exceeds the employee's payroll tax liability, the excess will be refundable. The credit amount is equal to half of the qualified wages of an employee, but such wages cannot be more than $10,000 per employee. Thank you so much for joining us today for Restaurant Recovery, and please stay tuned for future podcasts.